You sound remarkably sure of yourself. Remember, we are mere mortals. Our ideas are fluid like water. Only the Tsaritsa truly has a will as solid as the permafrost. But back to the matter at hand. Child tells me that he has upheld his end of your agreement. What agreement? Oh, the thing about him helping us find a guy? Correct. Child promised he would find someone to break the stalemate. And the Harbingers do not break their promises lightly. Ah, where is that guy anyway? Child is currently at Leoli Pavilion. Oh, oh, Paimon knows this one! Ahem. <clears throat> there are two styles of cooking in Liyue, known as Li style and Yue style. They have been competing for centuries, but neither has emerged as the clear winner. The flagship restaurant of the Li style is the Liyue Pavilion. The owner especially chose to open the restaurant at Feiyuan Slope so they could compete face to face with the Xinyue Kiosk which is the flagship restaurant of the U.S. style. Don't talk to Paimon like that! Anyway, Paimon's hungry! Let's get moving! Welcome to the Northland Bank. Aha, you made it. As promised, I have found someone who can help you. Someone who can solve the mystery of why the Liyue Qixing would hide the Geo Archon's vessel. So, where is he? In Liyue Pavilion? He certainly is. Come, I'll introduce you. I took the liberty of setting up a business dinner, as per the Liyue custom. Welcome back, sir. You honor us with your patronage. Mr. Zhongli is awaiting your arrival in the room you booked. Allow me to introduce Mr. Zhong Li, consultant to an organization known as Wang Sheng, and a trusted associate of the Fatui. Indeed, Wang Sheng's line of work can be sensitive at times. Let's just say they understand when discretion is needed. And we, the Fatui, have always been glad to do business with friends who walk in the shadows. Walk in the shadows? It is an honor to meet you. I have heard tell of you from Mondstadt. Discretion? Shadows? <sighs> Is Wangshan some kind of business involving... dealing with people? Indeed. It is as you have guessed. <sighs> the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor organizes burials. We ensure that those who pass on do so in peace. <laughs> Did you think he was some sort of hired killer? The Fatui calls many such people friends, but the Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor does not dabble in such business. Well, ostensibly. Well, they are still... Uh, I shouldn't say too much. In any case, I brought you to meet Mr. Zhang Li because... Because I can bring you to see Rex Lapis's vessel. What? <laughs> Don't be so surprised. Sure, the Geo Archon's body has been squirreled away by order of the Tian Chuan Ning Guang. But first, let's hear what Mr. Zhang Li has to say, shall we? Rex Lapis may be the prime of Adepti, but he is ultimately an Adeptus. Many Adepti have left us over the millennia. This is the inexorable trend. The times have changed. You must have felt it too when you were at Jueyun Karst. 
Archons go by many names. The god of contracts, the god of commerce, the god of war, Morax, Rex Lapis. Is the idea that he also has the title of Adeptus so strange? As you have seen, the time of the Adepti is ending, and the time of mankind is slowly dawning. In years past, Liu's tradition was that a huge memorial service be held to mark the passing of every Adeptus. But this time, the Qixing have made no attempt whatsoever to respect this tradition. It is sacrilege. Yeah, the killer hasn't even been caught yet. Deicide or not, the concern of the Wangsheng funeral parlor is this. When the ritual to receive this god is so kingly, it is all the more egregious for his final send-off to go unattended to. Traveler, Child has told me a lot about you. Since you have had dealings with the Animo Archon, could I ask a wise decision? The Tianquan Ningguang has forbidden anyone from accessing Rex Lapis's vessel, which of course you would need to access if you were to achieve your goal of meeting all of the Seven. Precisely. Only by participating in the Rite of Parting will you be able to see the form of Rex Lapis again. If we are agreed, come with me. We will speak of the details as we walk. All right, my bridge building work here is done. Turned out well, didn't it? You can go if you want to. Don't worry about me. I might just have a few more drinks and get acquainted with these things they call chopsticks in the meantime. After having experienced the land of the absentee Archon, Traveler, how does it feel to know that our Archon and Adepti are here all around you in Liyue? <laughs> I see. So you're that sort of person. It's not a bad thing. But I suppose you have yet to experience the substance of Liyue's 3,700 years of divinity. Organizing the Rite of Parting should prove to be an enlightening part of your travels. Liyue is the most prosperous of the Seven Nations, defended by deities and ruled by the Qixing. As such, the diplomatic maneuverings of the Fatui have gained no purchase here. Ningguang of the Qixing has always been on her guard against the Fatui. That is, in all likelihood, why Child wants to make use of the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor's connections. Huh. What would Child get out of us doing the rite of parting anyway? I neither know nor do I wish to know. As far as I am concerned, the Fatui are merely financial sponsors. I only wish for Liyue's traditions to endure. These are the advanced funds that Child has provided. If you use them up, you can go to him to apply for any subsequent funding. Wow! Well then, let us be off. The first step in our preparations shall be to obtain some prize Noctilucus Jade worthy of a deity. Welcome to the Jade Mystery, my good friends. Would you like to try your luck betting on Jade? This could be your lucky day. It's cheap and it's fun, and who knows, you just might strike it rich. Betting? No, no, we're here for... Um... What was it again? Noctilucus Jade, of Radiant Grade at the very least. Radiant grade, Dr. Lucas Jade? I see. You're not a tourist. My apologies. I have some here for your perusal. 
What do you think? The Jade Mystery is an old name in the Jade business. Just look at that wonderful quality. Rex Lapis doesn't often bless us with such finery. Go on, pick whichever one you like. These three pieces really do look pretty. Not like the ones you usually dig up. But how do we pick? Should we just grab one and go? Oh? You want me to decide? That is fine as well. If it were me, the answer would be simple. Oh? And that would be... I'll take them all, boss. Oh, you act with such panache, good sir. I always knew you were not a man of ordinary... Oh, wait, wait, boss! That one didn't count! We need to discuss it again! Hey! If we only need one for the ritual, aren't we wasting three times the more if we buy them all? Oh, Mora. Hmm. It is as you say. I suppose I overlooked this particular aspect of the transaction. Huh? How do you not think about Mora when buying things? If one must always consider Mora before acting, then in all things, one is bound by Mora. Uh... what? All Mora is currency, but not all currency is Mora. What? Is this how the rich live? Well, he knows a lot about big money, but not a lot about big savings. No need to waver. Even when I am constrained by Mora, I have ways of working around my limitations. Evaluating the quality of Noctilucus Jade is indeed very tricky. As crude ore, there is little difference in texture, lustrousness, and internal pattern between good and bad jade. Only after the item made using Noctilucus Jade has taken shape will you be able to see whether it is up to par or not. If you return to those crafty merchants to quibble, they will counter by saying that your crafting bench is to blame, or that your heat control was poor. Whoa! To think it's that easy to get cheated! But there is a way to truly evaluate this jade, and a true insider would know it. A fool sees the pointer and misses the moon. What does that mean? If you point at the moon with your finger, a wise man knows that you are pointing at the moon, while a fool will only see the finger. The patterns, the facade, these are all the finger. Noctilucus Jade is a mystical stone used to light up the darkness, and so its brightness is the important thing. It is the moon. Noctilucus Jade of excellent quality would have superior pyro affinity. In other words, the bluer and brighter the luster of the ore under high temperature, the higher its quality. I have imparted the priceless secrets of the Jade trade to you. Now, all that's left is to put it into practice. Priceless, huh? Paimon's just said that we might never be able to use it again. We're back to buy some rocks, boss. But can you let us burn them first? Uh, burn them? You can't do that, my friends. If you were to do so, what would I have to sell? <sighs> Not buying? Uh, come, come now, my good friends. We can still discuss this. Negotiation is key to trade, wouldn't you say? Uh, how about this? I can take a small sample of all three. I'll take a bit of a loss. Uh, we'll count it as a friendly gesture. <laughs> Don't worry. I know the rules. As long as we can prove that it is good jade, you will not take a loss. All right. Take these as samples. I've carved them off with a knife and tagged them to boot. Aren't these too thin? Even paper's thicker! No, even a bug's wings are thicker! These are almost see-through! 
<laughs> oh, you flatter me, but I have to be gentle with these rocks. They are my pride and joy. If I'd taken off even a bit more, it, <laughs> it would have killed me. But wouldn't something this thin go poof if we held it to the fire? It can't be helped. Trying to deprive a merchant of his profits would be like forcing a ravenous wolf to vomit up the food in its stomach. Nonetheless, under the right conditions, these thin slices will serve. What sort of conditions? While we add the high temperatures using pyro, we can use hydro to reinforce it from within. This way, the samples will not disintegrate immediately. Oh! Oh, sir, to think you were this learned. Thank you for your understanding. Strictly speaking, asking for samples when we have not yet agreed to purchase the goods is unfair. Trade in Liuer must be based upon fairness. Well, guess we just need to find a place to try this out. Oh, Paimon remembers we once saw this big pot down at the Data Upa Gorge in the camp of the hilly trolls from the Meaty Tribe. It's real sturdy and should be able to take the elemental reactions. Now, let's pack those samples up and make a move! It has been a long time since I last set foot in the Nation of Wind. A friend of mine from Mondstadt would always bring a few bottles of locally brewed dandelion wine whenever he came to visit me in Liuad. It must be said that the famed liquor of the land of Pastorals is far... That's the pot! <sighs> it looks like the hilly trolls are still using it! It's a bit polite, but we gotta cut the line! These hilly trolls sure have big appetites. This soup looks like it could be used as our hydro elemental protection. Let's fire it up and begin our experiment. We're ready to go. Paimon will help remember which one of the three is which. Use pyro to keep making the pot hotter until we get the results we need. Mr. Zhongli said that the shinier and bluer the ore gets, the better it is, so pay close attention. Shall we? 